This is the story of Rene Lacoste, the legendary tennis player who founded the Luxus brand. Lacoste went from jokingly branding his shirt with a crocodile to making millions of dollars selling clothing with crocodiles on it. But how did the crocodile joke begin, and how did he turn it into a multi-billion dollar brand? René Lacoste was born on July 2, 1904, in Paris, France. His parents, Jean-Marie Magdalene Lariolette and Jean-Jules Lacoste, were upperclassmen, so René could do whatever he wanted, but he became interested in tennis when he was 15 years old. René loved playing tennis so much that he decided to make a career out of it, but his father, Jean-Jules Lacoste, was not interested because René was not as skilled as the top tennis players. After seeing his son's passion for tennis, Jean-Jules Lacoste finally gave René his blessing on the condition that he become a world champion in five years. This was a huge challenge, but René wanted to prove himself to his father, so he began intensive training for three years. In 1922, René entered his first tennis competition, the Wimbledon Championship Grand Slam Tournament, but he lost in the opening round. He was disturbed by these results due to the pressure from his father to succeed. The following year, he entered his first competition in the United States, making it to the fourth round but being narrowly defeated by Cecil Campbell. Despite this, he continued his training meticulously, slowly surpassing his limits, and by 1923 he was selected to play in France for the Davis Cup team. René reached his first major final at Wimbledon in 1925 but lost to fellow musketeer Jean Barotra. His defeat inspired him to train even harder, and he won the French championship later that year. By the next Wimbledon tournament, he had a rematch with Jean Barotra in the finals, and this time he won. René was finally worthy of playing tennis in his father's eyes, but he lost the French championship the next year to Henri Cochet. René did not compete in Wimbledon that year after his defeat, instead, he spent his time training and improving his tennis skills. In September 1926, he did compete in the United States National Championship, and his final match was against Jean Barotra once more. He defeated Jean in the championship match and was named by the Daily Telegraph's number one tennis player in 1926. René is also credited with inventing the tennis ball machine, and he has had more spectacular victories in his tennis career, but how did any of these contribute to the creation of the Lacoste brand? René's dedication to tennis led to him developing a unique way of playing, which people took notice of. He frequently played in and around the back of the court. While competing in 1926, the French Davis Cup team reached the World Group Final and lost to the US team, but something extraordinary happened in the final tournament that piqued the interest of American journalists. Bill Tilden was the best player on the American team. He was well known for his unbeaten streak in tennis tournaments. René was Bill Tilden's opponent in the World Cup final, and every tennis fan around the globe was on the edge of their seats. René won the four-set game against Bill, much to everyone's surprise, and thus triumphed over him. René's phenomenal style of play was noticed by the American journalists in the crowd, who nicknamed him the Crocodile. Despite the fact that the team lost in the finals, this one victory increased their chances of winning the cup the following year. René then defeated Bill in one of his three matches against him in the next World Group Final. René embraced the Crocodile nickname when it arrived in France, admitting that the name emphasized his tenacity on the tennis court and his commitment to never giving up on his prey. Later that year, when the Davis Cup team faced a crucial match, their captain promised René a crocodile skin suitcase if they won. René followed through on his promise and won the match. After winning the match, Robert George designed a signature crocodile and embroidered it on René's blazer. He ended up wearing the blazer to his next game, and his confidence attracted the attention of tennis fans. It took another five years for the costly brand to be launched. René, who began training at a young age, made some findings about his personal experience. 
he realized that wearing a long-sleeved button-up shirt was very uncomfortable and did not improve the player's flexibility. This observation prompted him to create the first model of the official tennis uniform, which is still in use today. However, it was still in the production stage and had not yet been released. René appointed André Gillier, the owner of the largest French knitwear manufacturing firm at the time, to embroider the crocodile on the front of his tennis shirt, which he wore to the next game in 1933. They then produced more t-shirts, which grew into a business. René served as the brand ambassador for the company, which was officially registered as La Société Chemise Lacoste. René's sportswear was groundbreaking at the time because it was a short-sleeved jersey knit polo shirt, rather than the traditional button-up shirt. And this is how it all started for Lacoste as we know it today. Are you enjoying this story? If so, remember to subscribe to our channel. However, it was not until after 1950 that the brand began to expand and become more widely recognized. In the 1950s and 1960s, Lacoste continued to produce high-quality sportswear but also began to expand into other areas, such as footwear and accessories. The brand's popularity grew as it became a favorite among preppy and casual wear enthusiasts. Lacoste also became the official outfitter for the French Olympic team in 1968. In the 1970s and 80s, Lacoste faced challenges as the preppy trend began to decline in popularity. To change, the brand focused on making new lines of products and expanding its reach around the world. In 1984, the Swiss retail group Maus Frères bought the company, which helped it reach even more places around the world. During the 1990s, Lacoste continued to expand its product offerings, including a line of fragrances, and collaborate with fashion designers such as Jean-Paul Gaultier and Christophe Lemaire. In 2000, the brand opened an e-commerce website, which made its products easier for people all over the world to buy. In the 2010s, Lacoste continued to evolve, introducing more sustainable practices and materials in its production processes and increasing its focus on digital marketing and social media. The brand also kept adding new products, like a line of leather goods, and worked with the International Union for Conservation of Nature to bring attention to the plight of endangered species. Today, Lacoste is a strong fashion and sportswear brand that is known all over the world. It continues to innovate, producing high-quality, sustainable products and collaborating with a range of designers and organizations. Even though Lacoste has had problems over the years, it has stayed true to its roots by keeping its signature style and adapting to new trends and customer needs. That's all for today. Do you use any of Lacoste's products? Tell us in the comment section. We'll be back next week. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.